horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high or silver, the Lone Ranger. In the early days of the western United States, bands of outlaws roamed the frontier and in some districts became so powerful that their own men were elected to the office of sheriff. It was not until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice that the honest settlers found protection for their lives and property. Without his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness, the winning of the West might never have been accomplished. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Claiborne County. There's going to be trouble. Hi, old Silver. Hi. The scorching noonday sun beat down on the trail as the Lone Ranger and Tonto raced toward the little town of Glenville. Claiborne County needs a new sheriff, Tonto. And young Jerry Blaine's a man for the job. That's right. You're sure that he rode over here alone this morning? That's what Tonto pined in Redmond City. He should never travel alone. With Colonel Stewart and Mrs. Monroe behind him, he has a good chance of being elected. Sheriff Harvey knows that. He may try to get rid of him. You tell him that. Just look at this trail. Those rocks at the side would make a perfect ambush. Uh -huh. Jerry's young and confident. But I don't. Tonto. Ah, Tonto, see. Yep. We may be too late. Oh. Jerry. Dry ghost. Uh. Shot in the back. Him dead? No. It only caught him in the shoulder. Oh. Uh, Jerry. Oh, mass man. Tonto. Your canteen, Tonto. Oh, yeah. Now try to drink some of this. Take me to the bar, eh? No, Jerry. We'll take you to our camp. You'll be safer there. We'll notify Mrs. Monroe and the Colonel. And don't worry. Good. Never worry. Lone Ranger's around. Have you any idea who it was that dragged on you? Didn't see anybody. It must have been Harvey who was responsible. But he hasn't won yet. You're going to recover, and you're going to be the next sheriff of Claiborne County. Later that afternoon, Colonel Stewart reined up his black in front of the Bar M Ranch house. He dismounted carefully, squared his shoulders, and then marched up the steps and across the porch. Howdy, Colonel. I saw you coming. Good afternoon, Miss Monroe. Step right in. Don't call me Mrs. Monroe. All the other folks in Claiborne County call me Agatha, so you'll just have to forget your gentleman. A gentleman always bows to the wishes of a lady. Uh -huh. I guess I was asking the impossible. And before you sit down, let me have a look at you. Well, I'm fine, Agatha. Let me see for myself. Hmm. I'd say you was a mite peaked, Colonel. <laughs> I bet you're still having trouble with the fever. Perhaps a little now and then. But it won't be long before the rain stops. You still doctoring with Blackwood? Why, yes, aren't you? It was until yesterday. But I sent him packing this morning, and he'll never set foot in this house again. He's a fake. Well, in a way, of course. 
there's no reason why a man of medicine should pretend to be a witch doctor. But even if he is a Charlotte and Agatha, there's uh, no one else in the county. That's where you're wrong. Wrong? There was an Indian dropped in here last night to buy some supplies. Just to look at me, he could see I was ailing, and he made me some herb tea. Well, sir, I drank a cup of it, and in an hour I was fit as a fiddle. I've heard of Indian remedies for the fever. He left me some of the herbs and told me where I could find some more of them. That's why I sent the message over. You're coming out in the kitchen and have a cup of tea with me. Your troubles with the fever are all over. Well, it sounds too good to be true. Come on, that's just the way I felt about it, but it ain't. And when I spread the good news around the county, nobody's going to be troubled with fever no more. I sat down by the stove and I'll have it ready in a minute. Yeah. Uh, did you tell Dr. Blackwood about this Indian? I sure did. You ought to see his face. He went white and red and then white again. Looked like a son that couldn't make up his mind to sit. Well, did he say anything? He turned on his heel and walked out. Mm. Of course, he didn't have much choice. I was ready to use my broom on him if he didn't. Mm. You've made an enemy. That's all right with me, Colonel. Drink it right down. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's bitter. Oh, never mind that. Well, uh, I'm sorry that you weren't more diplomatic, Agatha. Uh, have you forgotten that we're trying to get young Jerry Blaine elected sheriff? We don't need Doc Blackwood's help. He's had a lot of influence, and so is John Harvey. If it wasn't for you and me, most of the folks around here wouldn't dare stand up to him. Well, there's nothing the matter with me now, and there won't be with you when you get finished with that tea. We made up our minds to beat John Harvey next election, and we're going to do it. Uh, it's a mistake to make enemies. Oh, oh, don't you worry about the doc's influence. He won't have none when I get through talking about him. I wonder. You may have found a cure for fever, but there's other ailments. Folks got nobody else to turn to but the doc. And when a man takes advice from somebody on one thing, he's apt to do it on something else. Well, all right, Colonel. If that's the way you feel about it, I won't say he's a quack to anybody but my oldest friends. Mm. And you see if you can smooth down his feathers. Well, I'll do my best. Not that I approve of him, you understand. I always figured he was working for John Harvey anyway, so why should we waste our time on him? He's a powerful man. Now, there. Now. I uh, thank you, ma'am. Now, you just wait. One hour is all that stuff needs. Now, let's see. we got a week before election. Jerry's got to... For sakes! Someone threw a rock through that window. There's a paper wrapped around us. Give it to me, Colonel. You go see who's riding away. Yes, ma'am. It's a note for me. Well, I, I can't make out. He's riding a sorrel. No, no chance of catching him now. I wish some of the boys was around. What's the note say? He must have known they weren't. Otherwise, he'd never have tried anything like this in broad daylight. What does it say? They're giving me a week to sell my ranch and get out of the county. Well, let me see it. You can't tell nothing, Colonel. It's printed. Uh, so it is. In pencil. But I'll bet my bottom dollar that Harvey's behind this. We got him scared. A man who would threaten a woman is nothing but a coward. It's more than a threat. Don't fool yourself about that. Impossible. Burn your roof over your head. I may be close to 70, Agatha, but if John Harvey were here now, I'd challenge him. I'd call him out Not and I'd make... Not so fast, Colonel. Who's losing the temper now? Oh, the scoundrel! You leave the shooting to the young men and use your brains instead. What we need is proof. If we can prove that John Harvey was behind this note, we'll beat him for sure. Isn't that true? Oh. Uh, come in. Uh, we'd better make sure that the... Howdy, Agatha. How are you, Colonel? Sheriff Harvey. None other. Pleased to see you looking so well, ma'am. What brings you here, Sheriff? Oh, just making a round of the ranches. I suppose I can depend on your vote. You can! Uh, 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 yeah? Uh, I'll speak for the Colonel, Sheriff. Uh, you've been such a good lawman, you ought to know just how you stand with us. Well, that's right handsome of you, Agatha. Is there anything I can do for you? Have you had any disturbances around here lately that I could take care of? Uh, what kind of disturbances? Well, I see that window's broken. Some of the boys been cutting up. I could say a word to him if you wanted me to. No, thanks. We don't need you, Sheriff. Hey, what's that note you got in your hand, Colonel? How do you know it's a note? I can see the writing from here. Hand it over. I don't like your tone, sir. This note belongs to Ms. Monroe, and until she asked me Please to give it to you... What the... A bless man. I'll take that note, Colonel. Those guns mean nothing to me. This note belongs to Ms. Monroe. It's all right, Colonel. Give it to him. Give it to him? Don't you realize this is important evidence? I'm playing a hunch, and I've got a good reason for it. Is that Indian sitting on the paint out there a friend of yours, masked man? He is. That's good enough for me. Give him the note, Colonel. You're sure Go that you... Go ahead. Hmm? Here you are, sir. Thank you, Colonel. Now, I have some news for you, Sheriff. For me? 
Jerry Blaine isn't dead. Dead? He's been wounded, but he'll recover. Oh, what's happened to the boy? What are you saying? He was dry ghost just outside of Glenville. This is your work, Sheriff. Ah, oh, you're loco. If Jerry's been shot, this outlaw did it. I'll get a posse. Oh, get... come here. Colonel, that's the engine that gave me the key. Uh, what you want Tonto to do? Get his guns. Uh, Tonto, get him. You'll pay for this. You won't find our camp and you won't find Jerry. Don't try to follow us. All right, Tonto. Uh. You're emptying the guns, Tonto? You're done. Just drop them on the ground. <laughs> yep. We only need a few minutes to make our getaway. Let me throw them in the mess key. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Man, I, I don't understand. Don't try to talk, Jerry. We'll tell you everything that happened. Uh, this note? Just listen. We reined up as soon as we got out of the woods. We saw a man on the sorrel at the back of the ranch house. He threw something through the window and rode away. We were going after him. They signaled to someone who was waiting on a ridge to the south. So we stayed where we were. A few minutes later, the sheriff rode up to the ranch house and went inside. When we got there, he was trying to make the colonel hand over that note. I heard him before I opened the kitchen door. And now you're going to try and prove that the sheriff wrote this. We're going to find out who wrote it. Uh, he gives Agatha a week. You think he'll really... Not if we can help it. Oh, why didn't I keep my eyes open? What chance have I got to win the election laid up like this? It won't be won or lost until the night before, when they hold the big meeting in Redmond City. I won't even be there. And you leave that to Tonto. Uh, you get well in short time. What about the colonel and Agatha? They'll be letting themselves in for a lot of trouble fighting my battles. I promise you that we'll look out for them. Oh, you don't know how much trouble, though. There's Harvey and all his men. They won't stop at nothing to win this election. They got a lot of folks on their side. Doc Blackwood and then there's... Oh, what's that? Sure. He's talking for Harvey all over the county. And outside of Agatha and the Colonel, there's nobody that... Well, folks pay more attention to than him. The doctor. You may be right, Tonto. Mm hmm it wasn't until after Mrs. Monroe stopped taking his medicine that she was threatened. Where did Blackwood come from, Jerry? Brownsville. How long has he been here? About a year. Is he really a doctor? He says he is. He gives folks medicine. He makes them well, sometimes. Of course, a doctor can't always be right. We've got to find out more about him, Tonto. Uh, here, Silver. Here, Scout. The canteen's right beside you, Jerry. You're safe here. We won't be gone long. Sure, I'm all right. Go ahead. Hip! Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. To what am I indebted for this visit, Doctor? You called this morning. And you called at the bar in this afternoon, didn't you? You're well informed. Did Agatha tell you the wonderful new cure she's found for the fever? She did, and she gave me a cup of the tea. The effect is remarkable, Doctor. I'd suggest that you prescribe it for your other patients. Mm, perhaps I shall. But not for you, Colonel. I feel much better after drinking it. Mm, that's understandable. All these Indian remedies have a tonic quality. But it isn't the fever that you're suffering from. You always said it was. Well, in your condition, it was wise to spare you as much worry as possible. What do you mean by that, sir? I hesitate to mention it even now. But I realize that if I don't, you may follow Agatha's example and refuse to follow my course of treatment. It's your heart, Colonel. You can't live without the drugs I've been giving you. It's hard to believe. I've never felt anything wrong with my heart. Well, you won't until the end. But if you want to live... Well... Yes, I, I can see from your eyes that you need some medicine this minute. I shall leave this bottle with you. There's water in that pitcher, isn't there? Yes, but I don't... I'll show you how to take it. But only three or four drops in a glass of water. Yeah, so. The dose to be repeated immediately following every meal. There you are, Colonel. Drink it down. I still Drink do. it. Well, if you're sure... I'll... What the? A mask man. I saw him at the window. He shot the glass out of my hand. I'll get him. He's just swinging into the saddle. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Dr. Blackwood emptied his gun at the Lone Ranger as he rode away into the night. Then he left the colonel's house to warn the sheriff. A few minutes later, the colonel heard two horses stop outside and... Uh... It's the masked man and the Indian again. Mm, Egg the trust them, but I'm not sure I do. I don't like being shot at anyway. You're covered, masked man. You don't need that gun, colonel. You mind if I come inside? Come right ahead. You can stay here until they take you to jail. I'm not an outlaw. Is there any way you can prove it? Not unless this silver bullet means something to you. A uh, silver? So let's see it. Here. From your cartridge belt. They're all silver. Yes, Colonel. Silver bullets. A horse named Silver. And Agatha called the Indian Tonto. You're the Lone Ranger. Colonel, Tonto and I are doing everything we can to help young Jerry Blaine. Well, so am I. Uh, what was the idea of taking a shot at me? I wasn't shooting at you. I shot the glass from your hand. You aimed at the glass? Yes, Colonel. What for? I heard nearly everything the doctor said to you through that open window. But I don't believe you have heart trouble. Neither do I. And I don't want you to take any of the doctor's medicine until we're sure what's in it. Well, here's the bottle he left. Can you tell from no, that No, Colonel. What? I'm running to Brownsville tonight, and I'm coming back with a doctor who's honest. Do you mean to say that Doc Blackwood isn't? We'll find out. It's going to take me several days. To get to Brownsville and back? <laughs> It'll take you longer than that. We'll be back in less than a week. But while I'm gone, I'd like you to stay at the Bar M. You figured that Agatha needs my protection? You read the note. I want you to stay there, and I want you to pretend to take the doctor's medicine. But you just said that pretend, you Pretend, Colonel, that's all. And if the doctor wants you to believe that you have heart trouble, pretend that you do believe it. You might even imagine a few symptoms. I don't understand. The best way to put him off his guard is to let him think he's succeeding in whatever he's trying to do. What if he isn't trying to do anything but cure me? Oh, I'm afraid you're suspicious of the wrong man. It's Sheriff Harvey that's a crook. We'll deal with him when the time comes. Will you promise to do as I ask? Well, uh, I guess so. I... That's Tonto's whistle. Danger. The sheriff and his men. Do I have your promise, Colonel? You have. Adios. No hurry, Timus Harvey. Them come over ridge now. You go back to the camp, Tonto, and take care of Jerry. Uh. I'll be back from Brownsville in less than a week. You hurry. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. The great horse, Silver, raced across the plains south toward the Rio Grande then south and east toward Brownsville. Claiborne County was quiet for the next five days, and then, just at dusk on the 6th... Colonel! Yes, Agatha? Who is here? Here? Why, well, no one. You're wrong. Look at this. A note. Another one. And you were stuck on the door with this knife. You sure you didn't hear anybody? No, I was asleep for an hour or two. Uh, what does it say? It's a last warning. They're coming Tonight? Tonight. We'd better warn the boys. I'll send word for my crew to come over you here. You leave that to me. I'll ride over to the bunkhouse before I start getting dinner. Let me, Agatha. No, I got best your saddle. Something told me not to turn her into the corral. You won't let me do anything, Agatha. I swear you must believe what the doctor said about my heart. No point in taking chances. But the mask man... And there's no time for arguments. Now what? Who's riding up now? Couldn't be them crooks so early. They'd wait till it was dark at least. The masked man. He's bad. Get him Tonto with him. It's Dr. Evans from Brownsville, Mrs. Monroe. Howdy. Pleased to meet you, Doc. And we're sure glad to see you, mister. There's going to be plenty of action before the night's over. Election's day after tomorrow. And they're going to try and get rid of me before the meeting tomorrow night. You've been threatened again? Shut the door, Colonel. Now read that, masked man. Doctor, will you take the Colonel into the other room and examine him? That's what I came for. And take a look at the medicine Dr. Blackwood prescribed. You still have the bottle, Colonel? It isn't in the same bottle. I've been pouring a little from one to another every day, so Black wouldn't think I was following orders. Uh, good. Uh, this way, Doctor. That note makes it look as if you're going to have to fight it out, Mask Man. With my boys and the Colonel's crew, we'll have about 20 men. 
I could get more if it was time to ride around the other ranch. There won't but... be any fight, Mrs. Monroe. There's got to be. They mean business. A lot depends on what Dr. Evans finds. But if he reports the way I think he will, we'll do our fighting tomorrow night and we won't need bullets. I don't savvy. And just listen for a moment. Here's my plan. Wagon all ready to go. We wait for night riders. Now, Colonel, I hope you got everything straight. Don't you go talking up loud and fierce, even if they do get you riled. Well, I'll try to do my part. But what if the plan doesn't work? What if they aren't satisfied with getting rid of us? The masked man says that's all they care about. It'll be touch and go, Agatha. And they're an ornery crew. They might decide to burn the place anyway. How about that, Chando? In their trouble, me blow whistle. Lone Ranger bring men from bunkhouse. Well, let's hope they do. Oh. Here they come. Huh? Tonto, carry you. No, Injun, I can walk. Say, Tonto, carry you. He's right. We've got to make this look good. Very yeah, well. I'll open the door. And remember, Colonel, don't say nothing at all. You see, Ryder? Yeah, they're coming. Can't see them plain, but I'll bet that's the sheriff riding in front. I'll just pretend to be fixing these blankets and back so he'll be comfortable. Don't make Tonto stand here holding me, Agatha. Why, oh, you not heavy. Bandanas over their faces, crooks, every one of them. Oh, 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 oh. Lift me to the wagon, Tonto. Uh, we lift him. Moving out. Any business of yours? What's the matter with him? Can't you use your eyes? Have you got that bandana so far up your face you can't see? You got our last warning. Now you better... Go he- ahead, you ornery sidewinder. You can do whatever you want to me at the ranch, but I got a gun here. And if you touch the colonel, I'll pump you full of lead. Where are you taking him? Where's the nearest hospital? Brownsville. Then use your brains. Don't ask too many fool questions. Help me up the driver's seat, Tonto. Uh, you better ride with us for a while. Uh, Tonto, do it. Here, rain. Thanks. Clear the road, you pole cats. If you want to prove your skunks by shooting a woman, go to it. We'll let you go. But when you get to Brownsville, stay there. Get up there. Get All up. right, let her through. Get, get him up, get up. Redmond City was crowded the following night. A platform had been erected in front of the Palace Hotel, and Sheriff Harvey and Dr. Blackwood stood under the glare of the torches, watching the men and women who thronged the main street. (laughs) Ah, they sure worked out fine, Doc. I think so. The easiest way to win an election is to run by yourself. It was the only way you could win. I don't know. I do. I can't help wondering, though, what happened to Jerry Blaine. What'd that masked man do with him? Well, we haven't seen either one of them for over a week. Agatha and the colonel are gone, too. <laughs> I gotta hand it to you, Doc. It's all over with the shout. Well, let's get that over with, too. Yeah. Gather around, folks. Gather around. There's not going to be much in the way of speeches tonight, folks. Because there's only one man running for sheriff. That's your old friend, John Harvey. All right, All right. I just want to say a few words about him. Let him say hello, and then we'll call on the band to give us some music. How about that, eh? I thought you'd be in favor. Now, John's been your sheriff for the last four years. Stand aside there, boys. I'm riding up to the platform. Who's Doc? That's Jerry. Yeah, two others with him. One of them's a masked man. What do we do? Let him get close enough so you can't miss, then shoot. All these people around? He's wearing a mask. That makes him an outlaw. Right. Doc, you're wrong about there only being one candidate for sheriff. I'm still in the run. No. no! Get that man. He fired on the sheriff. My hand. You aren't hurt. Men, are you going to stand for this? You're going to let an outlaw ride up the main street of Redmond City and act like you own the town? No, no, hold no, it, boys. No, hold it. Before you go for your guns, let me tell you something. This here is the Lone Ranger. Oh, he didn't hurt the sheriff. He just shot the gun out of his hand. And that's because Harvey was drawn on him. It's easy enough for him to call himself the Lone Ranger. I say he's an outlaw. You can speak your piece when the time comes. Right now, the boys are going to listen to the masked man. Give it to him, mister. Men, men, you all know that Dr. Blackwood has been campaigning for Sheriff Harvey. You all know that Colonel Stewart was working for Jerry Blaine. I'm accusing Blackwood of trying to murder the colonel. That's a lie. We got proof, Doc. Evans, step up here. Evans. Dr. Evans Blackwood, an honest doctor. You don't have to introduce us. We've met before. Folks, this man called himself Carter in Brownsville... And we run him out of town. You're making a mistake, my name. I don't care what you call yourself now, but you can't deny that this here's the medicine you gave Colonel Stewart. This medicine was supposed to cure a heart ailment, men, 
But if the colonel had taken it, he'd have died. It's slow poison. You're trying to frame me. It may be poison in that bottle, but I never gave it to the colonel. He took the medicine I gave That's him. That's where you're wrong. Prove it. Bring him back from the hospital. You won't have to travel that far. Come on, Colonel. Up here with the rest of us. I'll be right there, Master Man. He's here. Make way for him. And Mrs. Monroe. Yes, Sheriff. They pretended to leave the county to save the Bar M Ranch. From Night Riders, boys. Night Riders that wanted Harvey re-elected. How about it, Colonel? Is this the medicine Blackwood gave you? You had my word for it, sir. No, no, I didn't. Do your duty, Sheriff. The charge is attempted murder. Arrest that man. I, uh... It's only the colonel's word against the docs. And the word of the Lone Ranger. That's good enough for us, and it better be good enough for you. Arrest that man or you'll land in jail what? yourself. All right. Don't right. lay a hand on me, and I'll tell them all I know about you. No, no, I got my duty. There's proof against and you. And I got proof against you. Proof against you and Slim and Bat and all the rest of them that serve as a posse during the day and wear bandanas across their face at night. Road agents, rustlers, killers. He's giving it to you straight, boys. That's what we've had for law officers in Claiborne County. John Harvey was leading a gang of night riders that come to my place. I couldn't see his face, but I recognized his voice. Are you still going to elect him, Sheriff? No! Does Jerry Blaine get the job? Yes, no. You hear that, Jerry? You're elected. He can't be elected until tomorrow. Oh, you mean we can't vote him in until then? But if there's work to do tonight, there's nothing wrong with his taking the lead. Is there, Mass Man? No, Jerry. These men must go to jail. And the sooner, the better. On your way, Harvey. You too, Blackwood, or whatever your name is. That's it, boys. Hustle them along. We've won, Agatha. All the way, Colonel. And one without an honest man getting hurt. <laughs> we have the Lone Ranger to thank for that. And I aim to thank him. Where is he? Where'd they go? I can't see him heading for jail with the others. The other way, Agatha. There they are. Tonto and the masked man. Riding away. Just as soon as their work was done. Well done, Colonel. Well done. I The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger, Incorporated. <laughs>